Greetings, this is Daniel Raphael with Introduction to Social Sustainability, presentation number one. Our first chapter is Understanding Sustainability. What is that? What do we mean when we say sustainability? Well, let's break it down. The first word is sustain, which means to lengthen or extend in duration. How long the duration is depends upon what you're talking about. If you're talking about a plant being sustained, then you're really talking about uh, just a month or two when the, it flowers and the flower dies and uh, it, it begins to turn into seeds. So it, if you're talking about a, a, a social organization, you probably want to talk in terms of decades, a number of decades and perhaps even centuries, depending on the organization. Sustainable is another word. It means capable of being sustained. For a community or a society, it means indefinitely in, in the future. Does that make sense? So, and then there's the word sustainability. That is the ability to sustain. That means that within some organization or a plant, it has the capacity to self-regenerate itself so that it is able to continue in the future. The ability to sustain, that's what we're talking about. When we talk about social sustainability, and that's the topic I'm interested in, is the ability of a society to sustain itself indefinitely for five years, 50 years, 250 years, 500 years. You might ask, well, how does society do that? And we'll, we'll get to that later. That's part of the presentation and later development. Social sustainability is enhanced by a favorable environment, meaning if a, a nation is at war, that's not a favorable environment for a nation to become self-sustainable. You have to have peace or some modicum of peace that allows the nation to help itself develop and evolve. There must be a maintenance process or a regenerative process involved as well. Meaning that the, let's say it's a government that has a way of assisting itself to overcome problems. It could be leadership, it could be a legislative process, it could be new laws, it could be amendments to a constitution. Further, there must be functional components in an organization to assist in the social sustainability. That means that it has operational parts that don't work against itself. So that all parts support the sustainability of the organization. Chapter two, types of sustainability. There are basically just two types. Okay? Is material, and social. Material sustainability is quantity based. The resource for material sustainability is the material environment, natural resources. We think in terms of petroleum, trees, arable land, water, air, mining, and so forth. Okay? And how do we improve material sustainability? We can increase okay, the amount available. Okay? Uh, natural gas, an example, recently they thought they had a limitation of natural gas, but then they started the fracking process, which now we have an abundance of natural gas throughout the whole country. Or we can do the other thing, is decrease our usage. And we see, we see that as part of our sustainability projects in offices and in landfills and recycling centers and things like that. Now, social sustainability is quality-based. And the resource for social sustainability is the social environment, people social environment.
people. How do we improve social sustainability of a society? In order to do that, we must add quality, quality to the people. In other words, we need to add value to them to assist them to participate effectively in social sustainability. We increase value. Okay. Quality and value are all related. These are integral to each other. To add value to people's lives, we must improve the ability of people to make contributions to their own sustainability, whether it is in relationships, uh, education, family, finances, uh, spiritual, uh, ethical and moral decisions, uh, occupation or, or profession, their physical, and emotional, and mental health. When people have these uh, improvements in their lives, they can they become more capable of participating effectively in the social sustainability of themselves, their family, their community, and their society. Remarkably, it all begins with family, and we'll be talking about that more in the next uh, couple of presentations. These will be separate presentations. And you're wondering, well, how does a society do that? Well, <laughs> I'm leading you on. <laughs> I want to make you curious. Chapter 3, Quantity and Quality. Where did we ever get this idea of quantity and quality in people? When we think of quantity, this is built into our culture. And this is really subtle. Not too many people really get this. Is that we think in terms, in our American culture, of people in terms of quantity. We have objectified individuals. We see people as objects. A lot of you may question that, but let me tell you why. This all began with the Declaration of Independence, which states, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And you say, well, what part of that is uh, objectifies people, turns them into objects? It's the, the fact that it's, it asks people to be equal. It says that this is true, that people were created equal. You're one person, I'm one person. I have one vote, you have one vote. And so the subjects of the King of England wanted to be able to vote, to have some say over their own destiny, their own lives, to participate in the legislative process that dictate how they how would they live. And so they wanted to vote. They didn't have a vote before they came to the United States. So and they fought for this. They fought for this right to be equal as any other person. And so we have, throughout the last 236, 37 years, have, since the Declaration of Independence, we have, have dedicated ourselves, committed ourselves to making everyone equal. That at age 18, uh, whether you're a man or a woman, uh, of any race or any creed, or whether you have own property or not, you can vote to elect the officials who would become your legislators, congressmen, governors, and president, and so on. This has had a tremendous influence in our whole culture. We have, have dedicated our lives to the granting of equality as one to one. Only within the last 30 years have, has everyone become actually equal in their capacity to vote. If you look at the voting history uh, and amendments of the United States, you'll see that there's a complete historic record of this to the present time, from, uh, from the time of the Declaration of Independence and the Continental Congresses of 1787 and 1789, 78, 91, you know, two or three of them, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that, that one person has one vote as anybody else. Doesn't make any difference whether you're president or governor, one person, one vote. Now, what this has done, it has undermined the quality of the how we see people, how we value them, how we determine their worth uh, in the United States. And the subtlety of this whole process is that we have begun, begun 
long ago to associate the worth of a person to their value, their monetary value, how much property they own, and so on. Okay. Let me give you an example that shows this very clearly. If you were the captain of a tug-of-war team, and there were 10 people on your team, including yourself, and there was another team of 10 people, that means you're all equal, isn't it? So if you all started to pull on the rope one way or the other, uh, both going their own way, everything should be equal and they stand still. That is the objectification of people, meaning one person on one side, one on the other, everything's equal. But you and I know that tug of war is won by qualities of people, their strength and their weight and their determination, how they are able to dig into the turf and pull strongly on the rope. So that there's the quality of people that really truly makes the difference in social sustainability. For society, we do not necessarily need more people to improve the quality of our society, do we? Or its sustainability. In fact, quite the opposite. What we're finding is that more population is a detrimental factor to the social sustainability of everyone. Chapter four, social sustainability is a choice. First of all, you have to be aware that there is, that there is a spectrum of choices to be made. The awareness here comes in the fact that social sustainability is now an existent fact. Our nation and our, na our nation and many other nations, however, now are faced with an existential crisis. What do you mean by that, Daniel? Well, I mean that it, we have the choice now to either adopt practices of social sustainability to enhance the continuation of our, our nation and our states and our communities and our families, or we can wait and choose not to do that and wait for the inevitable decline and collapse of our nation and our societies. So what do we do? You say, here's another choice. There's, what do we do? Do we fix the old paradigm or we create new solutions? Well, you know what Buckminster Fuller said. He says it's better to create a new solution rather than to fix the old paradigm. If you begin to fix the old paradigm, which we've been doing in state legislatures and Congress for the last many decades, you really stay in the old paradigm. You're still stuck there trying to fix the old paradigm, which may be an error. Isn't it interesting in this choice number two is that when we think of social sustainability, we think of who is it for? Who do you want in the future with you? Well, in a democracy, you're going to be in the future, I'm going to be in the future, your neighbors are going to be in the future, and the people in the ghettos are going to be in the, fu in the future too. So in order to enhance social sustainability in a democracy, we need to think in terms of improving the quality of every individual to participate in their own sustainability, which makes a contribution to their family, their community, and the state, and the nation. One thing about time is that we're all going to arrive in the future anyhow. This is not a dictatorship. This is not a fascist regime. This is not a genocidal country. We don't eliminate people because we don't want them in the future with us. Everybody's going to arrive in the future, whether we like it or not. Therefore, it's time for us to start improving our society to make it more socially sustainable. Everybody's going to arrive in the future. What's the other choice? Because the, the future is not selective, how do we improve social sustainability? Well, we do that one person at a time to support everyone's social sustainability. This is a careful process that we begin to engage uh, pragmatically. I've been talking conceptually, but these presentations will eventually lead us into a pragmatic, practical approach of designing socially sustainable processes, uh, organizations, and institutions. Social sustainability for a society is a long-term project. Uh, this is not something to be taken frivolously. If you were out in the woods and you, without any tools, you'd be faced with the, your survival or your death in a day or two. Well, it's very much the same, that kind of thinking follows along with from survival to existence 
to maintenance and continuance to social sustainability. There is, these are decisions that preserve the life of yourself, your family, community, and state, nation, and civilization, now, today, tomorrow, and on into the future. What people have come to realize in survival situations is that their beliefs go out the door and their political agendas go out the door. You're mostly concerned with survival and continuation from one day to another. This is the most important part. Social sustainability does not allow a whole lot of room for variation from that. Chapter 5, improving the quality of people, adding value to their lives. Whatever system we use must be something really remarkable, something that is as enduring and faithful this year as it will be next year and 5,000 years from now, and as, as reliable as it was 5,000 years ago. We need something that will assist us that is uh, permanent, that is intrinsic to our social nature, something that is uh, viable now and viable in the future. Not something that is whimsical, faddish, or is going to change, but something that is really part of our social nature that is un unmovable, unchallengeable. What would that be? What would be that enduring? Well, you might say, well, Daniel, uh, uh, most organizations and uh, institutions are always founded on certain values that are common to everyone. Values that will continue on into the future and maintain the character and uh, perspectives within the organization now or in centuries uh, in the future. What are the, are the values of social sustainability? This is chapter six. Three core values of social sustainability. That's something that is permanent for all time Three values, three core values of social sustainability. Life. But we're talking about the quality of life. You either have life or you don't. If you have a life, then you're going to want a quality of life. You want something that's better, something that improves. <laughs> you know, just to live is not as sufficient for most people. They want something better that, that continues on. Okay? So they want quality of life. The other one is growth. Okay? To grow is to be human. To develop and mature and evolve as a personality is to grow. This is part of who we are as humans. If you don't grow, you're, you're going to die. This is the way life is. Okay? Growth is intrinsic to us now, and it will be intrinsic to the citizens and people in the future 5,000 years from now. The other value is equality. We're not talking about the old-fashioned equality of whites and blacks and votings and ethnic groups and things like that. No, we're talking about equality of value of individuals. You're as, in, as valuable as I am to society. Your worth is individual to you, and that you have an equal right to grow and to have a quality of life as anyone else. So the equality means equality of access to opportunities. Whether you take advantage of them or not is your, is your choice. But when people are denied this, then they are denied growth and they're denied the possibility of quality of life. These core values are irreducible. You cannot have life, a sustainable life, without these. Eliminate any one of these and you don't grow and you don't improve your quality of life. So these are subordinate values and, and this is the primary value here, quality of life. Hope that makes sense. So there's a synergy that goes on between these three values. 
you have to have all three working together in order to have a quality of life and a sustainable quality of life. This is, the, these are primary to social sustainability. In a socially sustainable society, or a, soci a society that is moving towards social sustainability, every decision must be incorporated, must incorporate these values to move the whole society towards social sustainability. It means your individual decisions, your family's decisions, your community's decisions, and the decisions of your county, city, state, nation, and global civilization. Any decisions and actions that are made which do not assist in moving a, a society towards social sustainability do not, does not include these. So these are primary to decisions that are made to support social sustainability. What does this do? When you make all these decisions, what you end up with a society is moving towards integration. All social processes and all decisions are moving together, they're working together, integrating the process so that everybody moves together into social sustainability. The opposite, which we see in our nation and many other nations, is disintegration and lack of integration. Okay? Is that they, you have separation. And many people are seeking separation from others, but that's not sustainable. You can only do that for so long. For a society, a nation that wants to be in existence uh, 250 more years, 500 more years, then it must incorporate these values in all decisions made at the, at the individual level, local level, social level, national level, and global level. And that moves everybody towards an integrated society, integrated economy, integrated uh, a process of governance. But that's way in the future, so we need to take care of other business right now. Chapter 9, social symbiosis. Social symbiosis, what does that mean? Symbiosis is an interdependent relationship between two organisms where each benefits from the other, and they benefit in a way that assists each one to have a better life. So in a social symbiosis in a socially sustainable society, the individual makes decisions that contributes to the social, their society, the community, and family, and through themselves. And then in return, social organizations and agencies make decisions that assist individuals to grow and to have access to opportunities to grow so that they can improve the quality of their life. Doing this helps society grow and not to, ironically, those same individuals begin to occupy those institutions, those agencies, so that they can make contributions of social sustainably, socially sustainable decisions to that organization, so that they begin to become infused in their policies and their, their social laws, so that everyone benefits. This is the long-term social symbiosis that occurs in a, in a society that is moving towards social sustainability. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Now, when I, I've mentioned before, you might not have noted this, but social sustainability occurs at the individual level, and the social level, and the global level. The social level is are those organizations and agencies in a society, uh, within a government, within a company, uh, within an association, a foundation, these are all social organizations where individuals come together to make some decisions and contribute to goals that they have, they, they have established. Does that make sense? Okay. At the global level, then you have nations which constitute a global com community of nations, where nations make decisions that contribute to the overall good of individuals, the social level, and the nations. That's what many international organizations, including the United Nations and the League of Nations, tried to do in the past, but they didn't have the three values, which are essential to social sustainability. These values must be incorporated in, into the founding documents and operational documents of every organization in order to achieve, in order to move that society towards social sustainability. Quality of life, growth, and equality.
these are essential. In the, with these three values operational, no individual is excluded. Separation does not include. People are included uh, at, to, become, to be taught and trained and educated to become responsible. Responsible in their personal decisions and in their business decisions and social decisions. This brings to a close introduction to social sustainability. This is just one of several presentations I will be preparing for the future. The next one will be Introduction to Social Sustainability, Creating Socially Sustainable Solutions Using the Schematic for Validating Social Sustainability. I'll explain that now just briefly. These three values are set into a procedural format. How are we doing? I just simply call it the schematic for validating social sustainability. Okay. So you have these values over here qualify. Let me write them a little smaller. Quality of life, growth, and equality. These are values. Every value, from every value, there emanates numerous beliefs. Okay? We have many beliefs about the quality of life. They're written into our Declaration of Independence. We have, have uh, values of growth and equality. We have many sub-beliefs about that. And you, you probably have a smirk on your face saying, Ah, oh, Daniel, <laughs> nobody would ever agree on what you want to do with this. They'll be, they'll be disagreeing all the time. Here's, here's the secret of this schematic, is that it is able to disclose and bring to the surface assumptions. Every belief has underlying unspoken assumptions and when you begin to work this schematic these assumptions come to the surface. If you are acquainted with David Bohm's On Dialogue, his little book, he discusses how to expose assumptions very clearly and this procedural format of the schemat is able to do that. From every belief emanates numerous expectations. If you have a belief that uh, uh, everybody should have an education, then you would expect that every child who is can be educated would be in school, enrolled. Okay, so we have expectations. So, out of one value, you have many beliefs and even more expectations. And then we have, have to be able to measure that. How do we measure that? These are criteria of performance. Measurable. Johnny is six years old. He's, in, he's, he's enrolled in Marydale Elementary School. He attends every day. There's records for that. That's measurable. So in this school process, we have these, this schematic. We can use this to design socially sustainable institutions, socially sustainable public social policies, and laws. These can be used for even interpersonal. This schematic can even be used for interpersonal problems and relationship problems. I've used it as a holistic life coach successfully. The presentation after that will be entitled um, Earth's Dilemma. That might change. I might have a different one for, for uh, the third presentation, but that's a lot on the table now. How did we get to the present situation we're in in our world right now, and what are we going to do about it? But I first wanted to whet your appetite, your curiosity with social sustainability and to discover and disclose and discuss some very basic concepts in this field. 
thank you for your time. I look forward to talking with you again soon.